Howdy doody. Well, I'm going to jump all over one of my favorite topics. And that is the Impressionist art movement. Which had its beginnings. Oh, some 155, 160 years ago. In France. And some of the major players were, of course, Claude Monet, Renoir, Degas, Cezanne, Mary Cassatt, and one of my favorites, Joaquin Sorosia, or Sorosia, <laughs> as the Spaniards would say. It's not, it's not spelled like it sounds, but uh, Joaquin Sorosia. And he started painting, I think, somewhere in the mid-1880s, uh, so roughly uh, 140 years ago. And what makes his art stand out, probably the most important element, is the fact that his work is the most regurgitated copied work of all time. Uh, to this day, artists are cranking out work that resemble his. And, and his work was pretty much about people. And one of his favorite subjects, uh, in, in multiples, uh, he would uh, paint women and children uh, at a seaside scene, at the beach, so to speak. Uh, certainly he painted people in other venues, but that was one of his favorite settings, and uh, it was, it, it pretty much encompassed, I think, most types of people, working people, uh, people at leisure, that type of thing, but, but his work is, uh, is renowned, and uh, it, it's not a, not a, common name in the art community. It's, it's certainly those artists who ha are well versed in art history, they will know who Joaquin Sarroja is. <laughs> but typically when you think of the uh, art movement, the Impressionist art movement, it's the Monet, Cezans, and Renoirs. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. And they were, uh, I, I like Monet a lot. Uh, Monet was known for uh, uh, pastoral scenes, uh, wooded scenes, uh, uh, wooded wooded scenes with water. One of one of his favorite topics, or 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 things that he liked to paint, were trees. And and his favorite tree was uh, the poplar tree, uh, which in French, uh, it was known as uh, uh, pupile uh, or les pupilles, <laughs> and actually that was the title of uh, uh, more than one of his his paintings. And uh, today they're they're only bringing in uh, in, in the multiple multiple millions of dollars. <laughs> I mean, we're uh, some of his paintings, of course, are over a hundred million dollars. Uh, so it's uh, that's a worthy note. <laughs> Uh, but at that time, uh, the movement itself was seen as a dirge of the art world. I mean, nobody thought it was worth uh, even talking about, but they hated it so much that, you know, it was seen as the uh, unfinished art, the art without detail. It, 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 was, it was a movement that just wasn't going to go anywhere. It would die out in no time at all. It was just... It, it, if we use the a, a modern terminology, the haters were out in full force. <laughs> they, they hated the Impressionist movement. But we look back, and history really tells the story because it was probably, in my mind anyway, the most important art movement in all of history. And uh, that's borne out in the type of art that was being put out and is being put out today. It is still one of the most important 
pieces of art that you can want, it, just stand in front of. I mean, it it really it doesn't have a lot of definition. Although uh, some of the painters today still paint in that style, but they uh, they have a little more detail, uh, and you, and that's that's common. That's that's the that's that's a common way of art. I mean, even my art, which is uh, from day one when I was an artist at the 10 years old when my mother bought me some art materials, a, a very uh, small set of, uh, of uh, oil tubes and uh, I think a half a dozen uh, primed canvases uh, uh, surprised me with that one day along with a couple brushes of course uh, and at age 10 I had no idea of what painting was all about. No idea. I'd never had been exposed to it at all. I I don't know that I'd ever seen an oil painting. I don't think I did. And uh, and yet she bought me these materials and I looked at them and looked at them. And, and finally one day I just said, well, I, I probably said to myself, well, I'm just gonna do it. And what I did was I sat down and I used up every bit of that paint on one painting. Now you have to keep in mind the uh, primed canvases that she gave me were about, I think, 12 inches square, as, as I remember it. And the first scene was uh, rendered as a memory that I had in my head of time spent at my grandfather's farm where he had this large wooded tract of land uh, uh, in, in uh, Victor, New York. And he had a stream running through it, a well-known stream up there. It was called uh, Fisher's Creek. And I just loved it out there. I, I loved my grandfather's farm anyway, but I, I loved that, that tract of uh, wooded property. And it was it was pretty big. Uh, my mother used to take us up there uh, every year. She was into building uh, terrariums. Loved building terrariums. And she all the material that she needed, the mosses, the ferns, stones from the uh, from the creek, uh, uh, every even the uh, soil. She would uh, pull all of the everything she needed to make her terrariums from that wooded tract of land, and. Uh, the three of us, my two sisters and I, would go along. Now the girls didn't like it so much, but my mother and I just loved it in there. And uh, and those memories stuck in my head. They they were just up there for the longest time. And uh, that first painting I did was a memory that I pulled from being in that in that wooded area. And the creek, and it, and it just, and to this day, that's where I draw most of my uh, inspiration from are from memories, and and that very first painting I did when I just lay, put the canvas out in front of me and started painting, uh, that's pretty much the way I do art today. I don't have any preconceived notions. I, I, I make the panel first, regardless of what it's made of, or the size, or anything else. I put it in front of me, I get my three primary colors out, along with some white. White is not a color. <laughs> Let me say that again. White is not considered a color. But my three primary colors, the red, blue, and yellow, uh, I, I just put it out on my palette and uh, start painting. And I let the uh, painting develop from that. And 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 I'm not the type of painter who just traces everything out and sketches it all on some some uh, venue to uh, get started with it, just so I have a concept of what I want to paint. I mean, you're you're right on the edge of. Uh, you know the old painting by number kits that you used to buy. Uh, you you could buy them with the lines all drawn out and the numbers in between the lines to tell you what color to put in there. It's, you're you're approaching that area when you just completely pre-plan a painting. I, I think the true way to just paint is to step up 
and start painting. <laughs> just let that, just put the paint on the on the panel and let it develop. And that's the way I paint. I, I have since that very first painting I did at the age of 10. And uh, it works works well for me. I So anyway, I'm, I'm probably going on and on a little bit too much about myself and, and, and uh, all of my uh, experiences, but uh, it's, it's, part of, uh, it's part of what I talk about and I enjoy talking about it. So anyway, uh, we're going to get on towards uh, something else right now, probably uh, another painting with music.